Hello friends, in this video I'm going to talk about nausea, vomiting, pregnancy and hyperemesis. This is a very quick video, so we'll able to see what is a generalized management. Definitely we'll make another videos where we can we can you know learn about definitely about the specific details of each and every management. But for now I'm going to just talk about how to differentiate different different patients and what treatment path they should go ahead. So I'm using RCOG guidelines here, that is Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So this is basically, uh, I got it from that. Right, now, whenever the patient comes to you who is pregnant, having nausea, vomiting pregnancy, obviously all of the patients must have tried, you know, at the time at home, they, they already have tried their home remedies. And if it is not working, then it's, you know then they are coming to you so by the time they come to you this is a little bit serious okay so what what are you gonna do you will just take the history and there is one specific score called PUQE score we'll talk about this score in our other videos but just for now remember that this is a scoring system used to divide or used to triage the patients where and what treatment pathway they should go at right so let's let's do it you know right now just uh, make it puqe score right now apart from counting the puqe score you also need to see clinical symptoms and your eyes should be on clinical complications so with excessive nausea vomiting or hyperemesis gravidarum there are certain complications which are very important to address. These, uh, these complications are dehydration, electrolyte imbalance and weight loss. Because these are the complications, they are, I would say, they are a sign of severe disease. So we need to have a quite very, very good watch on these symptoms. Okay, now let's see. If your PUQE score is 3 to 12, just for now remember it, that means it's a milder form of problem and you don't have any complication. That means it looks like a milder problem. Score is less than 12, 3 to 12, 3 is the minimum score. No complications, then in that case, the patient can be advised to have antiemetics the medications, oral medications, and they can be sent back into the community to look after. That means that you don't need to admit them. Okay. Now the next, you know, next scenario comes where the PUQE score is more than thirteen. That means that the problem is increasing. The problem is there. We cannot send the patient back to community. We have to take some, you know, take care of them. We have to treat something. We, they need more, most of the time, they need some fluid. They need more intense antiemetic medications. So the score is more than 13, but make sure that there is no complications that we discussed before. Those complications are dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and weight loss. There is no ketonuria. Okay, in those case scenarios, you have to provide the patient ambulatory care. Right, ambulatory day care, that means that you admit the patient for a day, you treat them and the patient goes home. What will you treat with the patient? I mean, what will you treat that? At the time, you will treat with fast IV fluids antiemetics more intense obviously if you if, if the antiemetic is not working one of the antiemetics is not working then you can add one more also provide some thiamine it's very important now the third case where where, where there is a complication it it's not a matter of fact that there is complication we are not relying on PUQE score here if you find any complication, if the patient comes to you, if you find one of those complications and if you find that the daycare management or the community management is not working at all, then you have to admit the patient. You have to do inpatient care. Okay. 
in those cases you just need to provide the routine things plus you need to look at thromboprophylaxis because the dehydration at higher risk of clotting you have to discuss this case into your multidisciplinary team meetings the refractory cases who are not you know improving with medications and all steroids should also be discussed so all of this thing now tells you how to manage the patient on first place we will go into details in further videos how we actually did this okay yeah so that's all for this short video thank you very much